All right, we can we can plot um, engineering stress and engineering strain, and we can we can plot those two things against each other as, as long as you know we don't load it too high. We will have a linear relationship, and the slope of that line is e, the Young's modulus. <coughs> the Young's modulus and we can write out an equation for that straight line which is Hooke's law just the same form as we had f equals kx in high school we've got now sigma equals e times epsilon that's Hooke's law and that's the equation for a straight line this time just involving sigma and epsilon stress and strain <coughs> So that, that tells us, um, you know, sure well enough, okay, the Young's modulus is the slope of this um, stress strain curve. Um, but what does that, what does that really, really mean uh, in, you know, in, in terms of what's happening to a material? And let's say we, we took a, I'm not going to be able to sketch this very well, but we took, what am I trying to draw here? What is this, can you tell? <laughs> it's supposed to be a, uh, an iPhone or something. That's a horrible picture. But maybe if I label it, you'll know. And it could be any other smartphone or calculator. You maybe you put it in your pocket. You put it in your back pocket. Okay. Into back pocket. And not necessarily the best place to put it if you're planning to sit down. But let's just say that you do, then sit on it. Okay. And maybe maybe you've done this. And um there's different things that could happen, <laughs> and let's explore those. So you you sit on it, and I'm going to draw it just in cross section here, and I'm exaggerating, of course, what happens. There's a certain feature of your anatomy there that's applying a force down to the iPhone, and it um, it changes shape. It it bends. It bends a little bit. Okay, and so so that's while the load is applied, and then what you're most concerned about is upon unloading what happens and let's explore some some scenarios one scenario is so we'll call this scenario number one it returns to normal okay it returns and that's good you're you're happy that that happened okay another scenario is you know you sit on it and Upon unloading, you find that it is still bent. Well, what, what happened there? And a final scenario would be you sit on it. Oh, and sorry, I'll draw the force in here from you sitting on it. And well, in fact, perhaps uh, let me allow if you could allow me just to fix that. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, what am I gonna do? Here we go. I know what I'm gonna do. There we go. I'll just change this drawing up, and I can say actually what happens is this. Oh, sad day. It snaps. I mean, yeah, it probably wouldn't snap in half, but let's just say uh, we exaggerate here. Something it broke. It actually, what we would technically call it, is it fractured. Okay, it fractured. Broke into two pieces. What happened here? Well, it stayed bent. Okay, so with those three scenarios, we can consider um, some very important terminology, and we can uh, help to understand exactly what modulus is, Young's modulus. So, what what's happened here? We haven't discussed yet, but it stayed bent, and so it the load that we applied. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say that the stress that results from this applied load exceeded um, some property of the of the the iPhone, some strength. It turns out it's actually going to be the um, the strength that we'd be talking about in this scenario would really be the yield strength. Well, for the metal, it's a little more complicated actually because the, the gorilla glass, glass, glass screen is a ceramic and it's going to 
have more of a, I'm not really going to have a yield strength of a fracture strength, but generally speaking, we, we can pretty safely say that we've exceeded a strength. Um, but in fact, we, we've we exceeded a strength here. Our, our load, I'm going to write in the word here. I'm going to write in the word applied. Okay, applied. The applied stress. Okay, applied stress exceeded it's, well, it exceeded a strength again, didn't it? But in this case, it's it's not the yield strength; it's the fracture strength, really. That's off the screen. Let's move that over. Exceeded exceeded a fracture strength. <clears throat> but what ha what happened here when it bent in your pocket? <clears throat> this is, of course, purely elastic. It doesn't involve a strength. It involves the Young's modulus. <clears throat> and so maybe an, another example to help you distinguish between strength and remember, we can change strength without changing Young's modulus. What if we had, a, we were designing a bench, okay, not as exciting as a, as a iPhone. Um, but we're going to have to design a bench on which someone can sit. There you go. Right, so w what if we designed that bench and we found that this happened? Okay, there's the ground and here's these legs and, and it, it bends so much that the person ends up sitting on the floor. And we could say, this has bent too much. Well, again, that was a, a modulus problem. We could say that the applied stress um, I'm getting so excited, I'm writing extra words. I've already got sigma in there, so I don't need to write stress. The applied stress exceeded um, well, what did it exceed? It exceeded the um, it exceeded so actually what what I want to say is rather than exceeded, it caused this is better. And this really gets at what modulus is. It caused too much deflection, the deflection of that beam. So modulus is all about that deflection or that elongation, you know, depending on how it's loaded, elastically. You know, this person gets off of that beam and it, it goes back to this condition. But did it bend too much? That's a con that's a concern of the an issue with the modulus. So sometimes, if you're looking for an English word to describe modulus. The word stiffness really describes the property of Young's modulus. Um, the only thing that's a problem with stiffness is often technically stiffness is used to refer to beam stiffness, which also accounts for the geometry. So for example, something like a, an I-beam, okay, an I-beam as you might be familiar with. Uh, well, an I-beam has this particular cross-section to it, and it's it's bent, it's loaded in, in bending, and the second moment of area is increased by having a lot of material far away from the neutral axis. So technically, stiffness is actually a function of the Young's modulus and the geometry, but if you're looking just for an intuitive word, stiffness is, comes pretty close to describing um, what Young's modulus is all about.